This is show number three with Dr. Justina Sang, MD, titled Heart-Centered Doctoring for Heart-Centered Living on the Health and Wellness in Encinitas podcast. Today we're speaking with Dr. Justina Sang, board-certified rheumatologist, uh, owner of Amora Med Institute here in, is it Solana Beach? Yes, it is. And uh, Justina, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, I'm really excited to be here with you today to be engaged in this conversation. Um, my name is Justina Sang, and I am a board-certified rheumatologist, and I've taken my own journey of healing that... Uh, has shaped uh, what I think and how I practice medicine. And Amor Med Institute is something that I created and founded. And its main purpose is to inspire and empower each individual to successfully engage in health, healing, and self care. So I work with people who are really interested in restoring balance and healing, tapping into their innate uh, wisdom, which we all have stored in our body, and really focusing on food as medicine and getting well in the most natural way possible. Wonderful. Well, I, I for one, am thrilled to, uh, to know you and to collaborate with you, and I think this information is, is what most practitioners and people in general need to need to know and I think are searching for as well and are ready to hear that we don't really need a whole lot of intervention what we need is a lot of common sense to bring the healing about your um, clinic is what's the location and the website yeah so the website uh, is www.amoramed.com the name of the practice is Amora Med Institute, and we're located in Solana Beach, right off of the five along the coast. And now you obviously see patients for things like arthritis. However, I'm guessing that you see patients for broad spectrum, all kinds of inflammatory disorders. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about who is your ideal patient. I do see a lot of rheumatology patients who are really interested in adding an integrative and or functional medicine approach to their current management um, plan that they have with their conventional rheumatologists. And it's a co-treatment approach, so I'm a big believer that the integrative concept is really beneficial for the arthritis and autoimmune patient. However, because we are realizing that chronic illness and disease is really a function of unidentified or low-grade inflammation going on in the body. I do work with patients who have non-rheumatologic conditions that range anywhere from psoriasis, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, diabetes. We have a, a huge body of evidence that's pointing to the relationship between stress, inflammation, and chronic disease. And what about for patients, and I know because we're going to be collaborating on a program that includes detoxification even for healthy patients, so how does this concept of detoxing the body play into um, both for just the average patient that may not have an inflammatory disease, but also for somebody that has an inflammatory disease? Sure. The concept of detoxification is a really important one, and it really isn't something that was covered when I went for my traditional uh, medical school education. So coming out of medical school and doing my residency in internal medicine and my fellowship in rheumatology, we, we didn't focus a lot on detoxification. It wasn't really until I finished my training with Dr. Andrew Weil um, at the Integrative Center um, in Arizona and then went on to do additional training in functional medicine that I was taught and I realized the importance of detoxification. Now we know in general that 
the liver is one of our main detoxification organs. And so we work with that, but in conventional medicine, it seems to be more of a kind of background concept. We do, you know, monitor the liver and we keep our eyes on the kidneys, which is another um, organ that's involved in eliminating toxins from our body. But from an integrative functional medicine approach, detoxification is oftentimes the first place that we look because if our liver is not operating optimally to eliminate toxins from our body, our body is a very, very wise entity. It has other other ways of storing the toxins so that we're not uh, we're not exposed. But what's important to know is if the liver is not removing the toxins and processing it so our body can get rid of it, we're storing it somewhere in our body. And that's that's a really important step when we're talking about symptoms that begin, syndromes, illnesses, conditions that arise. So in my practice, we really focus a lot on how do we support the liver, how do we perform medical detoxification in a safe way, in a healthy way, to allow the body's natural response to take over. I have my own personal experience because I, I had a fibromyalgia type syndrome um, and I continue to um, manage what I consider to, to have potentially been an inflammatory disease. And for me, detoxification, uh, both through diet and through I, the use of the technology that I work with at Thorpe Institute, uh, was effective and I was able to get out of that syndrome and later discovered that I have celiacs and that I needed to heal leaky gut and and I learned a lot more about it when I was able to audit the functional medicine course and I and you've made reference to functional medicine a number of times and I just want to touch on it real quick because I think a lot of people don't know what that is mm -hmm. and I personally am a huge fan of the Institute of Functional Medicine which people can find at functionalmedicine.org this is a wonderful organization that uh, teaches doctors a new medical model and uh, teaches them to look at the whole patient and some of the research that they've done over the last 28, I think, years that they've been around is showing that a, a substantial amount of chronic inflammatory disease and the diseases that are really prevalent today are at least linked to uh, leaky gut and dysbiosis. So. I'm not the doctor here, but I, I found the information that they taught uh, to be hugely helpful in the new medical model. So yay, functional medicine. I do think detoxification, I, at least I know personally, that it helped me to get well, and I, and I know that it's an important thing, and which is why we're going to be collaborating in a program. So I'm very excited and feel very honored that you're going to do this with us. So I just want to let everybody know we're here for our weekly uh, health and Wellness in Encinitas podcast, and this is happening at Thorpe Institute of Integrated Medicine in Lucadia. You can find out about our wellness collaborative by going to lucadiaswellness.com. And uh, once again, I just want to thank Dr. Sang for being here. And does anyone else have any questions at this time? Yes, John. I always have questions. Good. Mm -hmm. Which is, what do you do for fun? Oh, I love that question. What do you do? I mean, what do you like to do? What are your passions? What, you know, and I'm going to ask you one other question after that. Okay. I like your questions. Um, what do I love to do for fun? Well, the first thing that's coming to mind since we're experiencing our Santa Ana. <laughs> and what does that mean for people that are, don't know that? Santa and, and you know, I'm a transplant to Southern California, oh, yeah. so I'm, I believe the way I understand it is the, the, uh, the wind patterns come coming off of the deserts, bring in hot, dry air. And, uh, that's how I'm interpreting it because yes. whenever a Santa Ana comes through, my allergies are a little bit more active, but the sun is really sunny and the weather's really warm and it makes for a really beautiful beach day. So I love being near water and a very strong connection to water. I think it's very spiritual. It's, it's, um, it's one of Mother Nature's gifts and there's a lot of healing property to salt water specifically. Uh, so I resonate with the Pacific Ocean. 
I've always lived near a body of water, but my favorite body of water is the Pacific Ocean. And I really, I really love being in it, around it. So uh, the beach is a very favorite place. I was actually just having, um, having a little business meeting in the ocean yesterday morning. It's where I get most of my creative ideas and uh, inspirations. And so I make sure really to get into the water at least once a week, if possible. Nice. My other question was, um, when you think about a time in your life, related or not, to your profession, can you think about a time that was um, a defining moment that made that it, maybe at some point you made a course correction in? Hmm. Yeah. Well, there are many of those. <laughs> so, that, that would be like a whole series of podcasts, okay, I think. But I would say the one, let me think, if I am thinking about this question right now, you know, I was trained as a scientist. I'm, a, I'm an artist, and I'm a creative at heart, but my life journey really took me down the path of medicine and science. And I, I really, there's so many pieces to that journey, but when I think about it, you know, my integrative medicine fellowship with Andrew Weil was so profoundly healing and educational it really it really showed me how so many physicians in the United States have their own healing journeys to take and mine ended up being quite inspirational in giving me a much more expansive awareness of what we can actually do as physicians and for me it really allowed me to see that while I can write a prescription and while I can quote unquote doctor a patient, the reality is there's a really beautiful opportunity for me to bring in my, my gifts and my interests as an artist um, into the medical profession. And it's really led me down this really beautiful path um, that I show up for every day where I can step into my life purpose as a physician and healer and artist and really take that creative energy to support someone in their healing process. We haven't touched on, uh, Justina is an artist and she holds workshops. What I'm passionate about is intuitive art healing. So I work specifically and only with mandalas, mm -hmm. mandala symbols that have been used um, and people may be familiar with them. Um, sometimes the media uh, portrays the Tibetan monks making sand mandalas, which is an exercise in meditation and non-attachment. Um, so in creating the platform for the power of art to heal, which I really feel is very powerful and that we have not really focused on in, in you know, traditional medical models, I have a mind-body healing studio as part of the practice and it's offered for both patients but also for anybody in the community that really wants to explore uh, a healing journey which inevitably always takes someone into their heart space. So it's a creative healing studio that people I teach people to work with the mandala painting process it's a mind-body medicine technique, and it's a very passive, gentle way to explore emotional healing. And I find that's really important because there's a body of evidence that suggests that physical disease begins in the emotional body. And if we can address the emotional energy state that we hold within us, we can sometimes really not only experience miracles but really take a very preventive approach yeah Colin was talking in the lunchroom about healing so I think I've mentioned this before maybe even on our podcast but I had the opportunity to work with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross beautiful so she said you hold something longer than 17 seconds it becomes unfinished business so I think that people that are actually doing the healing work and helping people release energy whatever emotional also need to integrate that in and teach people how not to hold on. Exactly. I mean? Yes. Like let go, let God, whatever you want to call it. 
And yes. I, my experience is meditative states have a tendency to facilitate that. Yes, and paint, mandala painting is a form of mindfulness meditation. And uh, mindfulness meditation, other forms of meditation, really allow us to quiet, uh, quiet the mind, quiet the chatter. And it's that state when we're quiet that we can tap into a zone of clarity and inner awareness. And that's a whole nother energy state that can be harnessed for health and healing and creativity and inspiration. Um, but I completely agree with you is that we're, we're somewhat wired as humans to remain attached Mm -hmm. And uh, letting go is such an exercise in life, whether it's around disease or uh, something else. And so it's a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm finishing up a master's in spiritual psychology. So it's two years that we really learn how consciousness states affect our mind, our body, and our spirit soul process. And there's a lot of information on consciousness, health, and healing out there. So I have really brought this in to my medical practice and my philosophy. And having personally experienced it, uh, can can talk about it from a place of knowing for myself. I think you're alluding to it, but so what inspired you to get a master's in spiritual psychology? Well, I am a patient myself. I happen to be a rheumatology patient. <laughs> and, and and that was a decade-long journey, you know, of being very upset at being a patient and having symptoms and being in chronic pain and, you know, taking pills and refilling prescriptions. And so I, I went on my own healing journey, and I'm currently symptom-free and off medications, but I've always been interested in spirituality. And, you know, sometimes people get nervous about this word, what does spirituality mean? Is it related to religion? And I've been following this, you know, for over a decade now because I did a little bit of research in my rheumatology fellowship um, on mind-body movement therapy. So there were a ton of papers talking about this, but, you know, we have really established physicians like Dr. Larry Dossie who talks about the power of prayer. And I think the important thing about spirituality and the energy behind spirituality medicine, which is, is really about soul medicine. We know that things can be wired into our DNA. We can pass things down intergenerationally. And a lot of times this is emotion-based, how we handle situations, how we respond versus react, um, our relationships to addictions, um, this, can, this can somehow be wired um, into our DNA. And so, you know, we look at intergenerational healing and what does that mean? And, you know, um, we've done a lot of work with this in, in the master's program. My personal interest was that I always had this inner curiosity and knowing that there was something else that's out there you know we could call it the the universal intelligence field uh there's so many names for it but you know the experience is that there is there is a bigger force out there that is present and guiding us and as a scientist you know i've had to to take my own journey to really believe this and surrender and to let go of what I was taught conventionally and to really expand my um, my ability to think beyond what I was taught in a very traditional scientific model. And I love asking the question, why? You know, why is this? Why, why don't we have more answers? Why is there something out there but we can't see it? Um, and so, you know, the 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 spiritual the spiritual path for me is really learning how to connect with this bigger force field, if there is such one, right? right. And I have learned in the last two years, for me at least. There really is one. Yes. And so I've had my own experience, and now I share that with others. It's such a pleasure, such an honor. Yes, Thank you so much. Yeah. You're very welcome. Dr. Justina Singh, Amora Med Institute. We're here at Thorpe Institute of Integrated Medicine.